Well, Vladimir Putin, 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 I guess, heard my video yesterday and decided, you know what? Uh, the Sultan of Smug is calling me out, and so I've really got to change my ways. I've got to act. i got to do something, or else I'm going to look weak. And so soon after my video was published, within hours, uh, there was a volley of missiles uh, directed towards various Ukrainian cities, such as uh, Kiev, uh, Lviv, Lvov, Lemberg. That's all one city, three different languages. And uh, what was the third one? Um, I think uh, Dnipro or, or Dnipropetrovsk or whatever the Russians call it. It's so confusing having multiple names for all these different cities. I mean, this is a this is a uh, this is a big problem in Eastern Europe. I don't mean to get on. And and this video is not even going to be about Ukraine and Russia. But I just have to say this: Eastern Europe, you folks, you need to stop renaming your cities. I hate it. It's like it's weird. It's covering up history so much that you have to change the names of all these places. Uh, you've got <clears throat> friggin' Danzig. Uh, the Poles insist on calling it Gdansk, which is a terrible name. Uh, Danzig is much easier to say. You have St. Petersburg, which was first renamed Petrograd because the Ruskies felt that, you know, hey, having this German name for our capital city uh, is... Uh, really kind of unpatriotic. So we're going to give it a Russian name. Uh, and then so within like five years, the Tsar was overthrown. And they said, Peter, he was the Tsar. We hate Peter. We're going to call it Leningrad. And then uh, a few decades later, they get rid of the Soviet Union. They say, Lenin, he was a communist. We don't want our city named after him. Uh, we're going to call it St. Petersburg again. And then you've got the problem of Lviv, Lvov, Lemberg. You have... Uh, Kiev now being now that everyone acts like it's always been called Kiev, even though it wasn't until the start of this war. Western media never called it Kiev. Uh, I mean, there are uh, you know pro Ukrainian businesses, you know, like Ukrainian owned businesses um, in my area that have Kiev spelled K I E V in their name. You know, I, I wonder if these folks are going to have to rename uh, their businesses, you know, to get the, the name Kiev out of it. But I, I, I don't want to go down that tangent. Today's not about Russia and Ukraine. I just wanted to point that out, that uh, Putin, Putin, Putin did take some action. I will talk more about Ukraine later, uh, probably, you know, maybe not tomorrow, but uh, in due time. I've talked about it enough for now. For today, I want to talk about old Ben Bernanke, uh, former chairman of the Federal Reserve, uh, Friedmanite monetarist, former Republican, and all-around uh, piece of shit war criminal. Today he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Economics uh, in honor of his response to the 2008 financial crisis, which is hilarious considering you know we're on the eve of another uh, depression, a depression that. He himself set the groundwork for by kicking the can down the road back in 2008. We are going to have a worse depression uh, than than we would have had uh, back in 2008 had Ben Bernanke done absolutely nothing and you know sat on his hands. The situation is going to that we're about to enter is going to be much worse than what that would have been. And uh, by and large, it's all Ben Bernanke's fault because he had the power to stop this from happening. He could have made America take its medicine back then. Uh, and for me, someone who, uh, you know, is now, I'm now in my uh, mid-twenties, I would have much rather, for my sake, the country take its medicine, so to speak, and purge itself of all the malinvestment way back in 2008 when I was, uh, I think, still in elementary school, like right at the tail end. Because had we done that, we would have a truly dynamic economy now um, with a, a lot of opportunity for young people such as myself instead of uh, a ridiculous clown economy uh, that is propped up on paper by asset price inflation. A good example of this is that when you look at all the jobs that were lost back into the 2008 crisis versus the jobs that were recovered, quote unquote, after uh, you know Ben Bernanke uh, saved the day way back in 2008 with quantitative easing and zero percent interest rates. My gosh, so creative! It was so innovative. 
You know, it's not like Japan had been doing that for 20 years at that point uh, and, you know, had completely destroyed their economy, created what was called the lost generation. But no, they act like uh, Ben Bernanke, uh, you know, was, was uh, uh, you know, handed the plan uh, for the the post-2008, uh, you know, so-called recovery and, uh, you know, his saving the day, like he was handed it down on stone tablets from Mount Sinai. No, the fact is the QE and 0% interest rates had been tried before in Japan, failed miserably, and for some reason, Ben Bernanke said, you know what, Japanification is better than a uh, depression that might last for a couple of years. And of course, we had an economic, you know, catastrophic economic slowdown anyway. It was still a really bad situation. Yes, it would have been worse in a sense, but in the long run, um, what Ben Bernanke did was much, much worse. And, and still, you look at all of those people back in 08, they still lost their houses, you see. It was only the banks that were saved. So the average American uh, was not helped out at all by what Ben Bernanke did. That's the irony. He didn't save anybody except for himself and, uh, you know, a few hundred of his closest friends. Ben Bernanke, who is now, I believe, a, an executive over at Citadel. So uh, the fact that he is being given the Nobel Prize in Economics uh, says much more about the, the Nobel Committee uh, and, you know, the, the very meaning of the Nobel Prize itself than it does about Ben Bernanke. Because the man belongs in a prison cell at the very least. Um, some might argue that he uh, deserves more than imprisonment. And if you think about it in aggregate, the amount of pain and suffering that he has caused people not only in America but around the world is uh, immeasurable. No civil court could tally up all of the damages that were caused by the actions of Ben Bernanke. And when you couple that with the uh, financial benefit uh, for people such as himself and all of the other corrupt billionaire class uh, in America and around the world, uh, it becomes very clear what he did. He chose to inflict pain and suffering uh, on hundreds of millions, if not mm, in the billions of people. Because make no mistake, the dollar is, a global con uh, is the global reserve currency. Uh, ben Bernanke's actions had an impact on the global economy. And so what did he do? He distorted asset prices. He inflated the prices of assets that were, uh, if not worthless, certainly worth less than he made them worth. He uh, therefore, in a relative sense, devalued uh, other assets. He devalued uh, people's incomes. He devalued uh, their economic output. The man who succeeds in America today is not the man who works hard and produces value for the economy, who produces things that other people in this economy want uh, to buy. The man who succeeds is the person who just buys assets and sits on them uh, because and waits for the Fed to inflate the price of them so that they can then sell them down the line uh, at a higher price. That's how you make it in America today. You don't make it by producing anything. You don't make it by working. And so therefore, he undervalued labor, devalued labor, devalued entrepreneurship, devalued uh, um, uh, invention, because all the capital was soaked up into these artificially inflated assets that, frankly, uh, no one should have invested in. He turned savers into chumps. If you have a savings account in the Western world, you're a chump. You're losing money. They steal money from you every year because inflation is always higher than whatever the rate of interest is on your savings. And they do that on purpose because they want you to go out and either buy stocks, or bonds, or real estate, or they want you to just go consume like a mindless consumer. And that's why people live paycheck to paycheck, because even if they could save money, they have no incentive to. They have to spend it or else they're going to lose it. Living paycheck to paycheck is the most financially responsible thing you can do in America. And that is the world. That is the ramifications of the actions of 
disgusting men like Ben Bernanke. And so uh, I hope he enjoys riding high on the hog while he still can. Um, you know, he is getting up there in years. I mean, he's not he's not by no means, a, you know, on death's door or anything, but he's getting into, I think, his 60s or 70s. And money can only buy you so much. So I hope it's worth it to him once he has to spend an eternity in hell. Because really, if you think of it in aggregate, some of the people that we think of as being, you know, the worst people in society, you know, murderers, uh, rapists, uh, the like, have caused far less suffering and committed much less evil than people like Ben Bernanke. And you could even argue, uh, and I, I think it's certainly true, that his actions did directly cause people's deaths because of the suffering that he inflicted suicides, drug overdoses, the opioid epidemic. These are all byproducts, uh, at least in part, of his actions. And he feels zero remorse. No doubt there are good, hardworking men and women in this country who are dead or destitute, who would have otherwise been alive and thriving were it not for the existence of Ben Bernanke. And so we see someone, you know, who some, you know, craven, uh, you know, bad, evil person who murders one per uh, one human being. He takes one life, destroys one life, and people look at him and go, "Oh, he's going to rot in hell for what he did." Yet they look at Ben Bernanke and don't think the same. Make no mistake, Ben Bernanke is going to rot in hell. There are a few people on this planet who deserve an eternity of suffering more than Ben Bernanke. So with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.